CBS News has confirmed that lawyers for former President Trump had a meeting yesterday at the Justice Department as he faces possible charges on multiple issues being investigated by a special counsel. For insight into this and much more, we're joined by Bill Barr, who served as attorney general in the Trump administration. Since then, he has criticized a former president on a number of fronts. He's also the author of, I love this title, One Damn Thing After Another, Memoirs of an Attorney General, which is out in paperback today, wherever you like to buy your books. We're happy to say that Bill Barr joins us at the table this morning. Good to see you. Good to see you, Gail. Bill Barr. Listen, I know from reading your book you play a mean bagpipe, but I'm understanding <laughs> you're not going to be serenading us today. Not today, no. Yeah, our loss. But let's talk about the meeting yesterday that the Trump attorneys had with the special counsel. What does it say to you? What is the significance? Because you know how this game is played. You know this record. You know this song. What did it say to you? I, th I think that meeting was probably held to complain about some aspects of the special counsel's work, mm -hmm. because generally the special counsel is generally independent and can make up their own mind. And I think they probably went to Maine Justice, which is where this meeting was held, to complain, of, to, cl to claim that the special counsel hasn't been following the rules. But does it say to you that an indictment is near? Do you believe that? I, I suspect near? it's. I suspect it's near. I've said for a while that I think this is the most dangerous legal risk facing the former president. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I had to bet, I would bet that it's near. You believe there is enough evidence? Well, they won't indict if there's not enough evidence, but from what I've seen, uh, there's substantial evidence there. Um, and, and if there is a federal indictment, Bill, do you think that that hurts him politically? You know, it seems that whenever he's indicted or he's um, under scrutiny, his numbers go up, the support goes up, the donations go up. Do you think a federal indictment will make a difference? And I know it won't for his yeah. core base. So in the immediate future, it, it might. But I think if the, based on the facts, as the facts come out, I think over time people will see that this is not a case of the Department of Justice, you know, conducting a witch hunt. In fact, they approached this very delicately and with deference to the president. And this would have gone nowhere had the president just returned the documents. But he jerked them around for a year and a half. And the question is, did he deceive them? And if there's evidence of that, uh, I think people will start to see that this says more about Trump than it does the Department of Justice. And that is that he, uh, he, he's so egotistical that he has this penchant for, for conducting, you know, risky, reckless acts to show that he can sort of get away with it. It's part of asserting his, his, mm -hmm. his ego. And he's done this repeatedly at the expense of all the people who depend on him to conduct the public's business in an honorable way. And, you know, we saw that with both impeachments. And there's no excuse for what he did here. Whether it's a crime or not remains to be seen. Do you think he deceived them? You know this man very well. Do you think I, I think the government believes that. I didn't ask the government. I said, do you think you know? I don't know. I don't know, the, I don't know the evidence in that kind of detail. Mm -hmm. Well, but you also said he didn't act in an honorable way. Everybody who knows you says that you are an honorable man. Or they may disagree with some of the things you say or some of the things you do, but they say the core of Bill Barr is he's an honorable man. And I, I guess I wonder why you worked with him for so long, seeing the things that you saw up close and personal, why you stayed as long as you did. Well, I went into the administration halfway through, and I did it at a time where I felt he was being treated unfairly on the Russiagate thing. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a, you know, and turned out to be, I think, a big lie. And I felt that he, des he was the duly elected president and he deserved the chance to conduct his administration. And I went in because I thought I could help stabilize things and also have the administration conducted in an, in an appropriate way. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I, I felt the idea that the election was stolen was a big lie and I wasn't going to play a part in you that. You called him I on left. that, yeah. yeah. Well, Mr. Attorney General, uh, the former President Trump is still the odds-on leader uh, of the party and the likely winner of the primary if it were be, to be held today uh, in all 50 states. But you don't think he's going to win the nomination. I know you still hold that view. Uh, who do you like as an alternative? Is it Ron DeSantis? Uh, is it the governor of Virginia? Is it uh, the governor of North Dakota? If you're a Republican, Republican voter right now. You've got a lot of strong choices out there. Yeah, I like I like most of the people running. I think they're great. And what they show, uh, and, and, and people who are locked into Trump have to start focusing on the facts. And the facts are that we have Republican leaders who can follow conservative policies uh, and expand the vote and win crushing victories like DeSantis did, like Governor Kemp in Georgia, like Governor Yunkin, who's very popular in Virginia, following 
conservative policies. Yeah. Trump is almost unique in his inability to attract voters. He repels people other than his core base. And he's got a strong psychological hold on that core base. So in 2020, uh, the, the Democrats uh, coalesced around Joe Biden, right? There, there was a point in which the other candidates dropped out and all the energy went to him. Could Republicans who don't have quite the organizational uh, setup that the Democrats have do the same thing here so that Trump does not become the winner by default? Mm. Yeah, I hope they have the self-discipline to do it. And I expect that at the beginning of 24, a lot of the candidates will pull out. I think it's good that they're out there talking. That's a good process. But uh, once they, it's clear they don't have a chance, they should pull out. You, but last you're time you were here, last time you were here, though, Mr. Attorney General, you said if Trump is, you called him, uh, his ability is a horror show, he would only deliver chaos if elected again. But you told us at that time, if he were the nominee, you would still support him. I knew you were going to come way? back on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, I, I would think. Would you still support him? I, I don't see myself not supporting the Republican candidate. Even, and, and that's even, even so based on. Choice between, because yeah, because, because I think. Because, you know. Look, I, I, I think Biden is just as, you know, he has a different set of problems. Uh -huh. I think uh, neither of them, in my opinion, are fit for the office, and the American people deserve better. But if I'm confronted with that choice, I have to go with policy. Who's closest to me on policy? So you're going to lean, lean Republican even if there's a better Democratic candidate? He's well, I, I'm talking about Biden here. Yeah. You know. I know. I know but yeah. Will we see a Bill Barr endorses headline this election cycle? Endorses who? Somebody, anybody. Oh, yeah. You're going to endorse. At some point, if okay. I become convinced, sure. All right. May I say that your book, Bill Barr, One Damn Thing After Another, is available wherever you like to buy your books. We'll be right back. Call right. him. He'll endorse. <laughs> <laughs>